Welcome. I am calling to order this meeting of the Arlington Select Board on Wednesday, December 21st, 2022, and the first day of Astronomical Winter. I am Select Board Chair and Sanders favorite naughty elf, Leonard Diggins, and I will now confirm that all members and persons anticipated on the agenda are present and can hear me. Members, when I call your name, please respond in the affirmative. Ma'am Mahan? Yeah, affirmative. Steve Corsi? Yes. Uh, and John Herbert will be joining us later, meaning that Eric Helm is, is not going to be able to join us tonight. Um, Sandy Pooler? Yes. Doug Heim? Yes. Ashley Meyer? Yes. Thank you, staff, for responding in the affirmative. Uh, tonight's meeting of the Arlington Select Board is being conducted in a hybrid format consistent with Chapter 107 of the Acts of 2022, signing a law on July 17, 2022, which further extends certain COVID-19 measures regarding remote participation until March 31, 2023. Before we begin, please note the following. First, this meeting is being conducted via Zoom. It is being recorded and is also being simultaneously broadcast on ACMI. Second, persons wishing to join the meeting by Zoom may find information on how to do so on the town's website. Persons participating by Zoom are reminded that you may be visible to others and that if you wish to participate, excuse me, if you wish to participate, you are asked to provide your full name in the interest of developing a record of the meeting. Third, all participants are advised that people may be listening who do not provide comment and those persons are not required to identify themselves. Both Zoom participants and persons watching on ACMI can follow the posted agenda materials also found on the town's website using the, to using the Novus Agenda platform. And finally, each vote tonight will be taken by roll call. So let's see how much of the town's business we can get done tonight. And unfortunately, it's so hot in here, I have to take this off. <laughs> so I'm just burning up as it is. So You're so naughty. Go ahead. <laughs> so, 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 uh, so next on the agenda is acknowledge in an acknowledgement and a letter of appreciation to Kevin Mills, a uh, uh, member of the Zoning Board of Appeals from, he was an associate member um, from, from 2017 uh, until 2020 and a voting member from 2020 uh, to 2022. So Mr. Mills, thanks for joining us. And, and, and um, yeah, I apologize for the short notice on the previous invitation, but you're here tonight and and I have to say that we don't have a formal policy of doing this, at least not yet, but, but when we have the chance, I think it's always good to take some time to acknowledge the people who have served on, on our various boards and commissions. And, and not only, I think, does it let the person know that we very much appreciate uh, what they have done and hopefully to get some good feelings from that. But um, in the process, it helps us to go back and see what they've done and, and realize to be uh, to a great extent what we really have to be appreciative of. And in the process of doing this, I talked to a couple of your colleagues and their words were put into the letter of appreciation, which I'll ask our uh, boarded men to send to you um, a hard copy at some point. And, uh, but um, the current chair, Christopher Klein, I'm not going to read the hard, a whole letter, I'm just going to read a couple of excerpts being, um, from it. Um, you're, the current chair, Christopher Klein, said he's, he's always brought an air of levity to what were often many contentious hearings. He had a firm grasp on what was important and could distill, and could distill discuss, discuss, excuse me, it's a little hard sometimes in the mass, and could distill the discussion down. And, and Patrick Hanlon said, second, Kevin was totally constructive. Time and time again, he would point out potential problems for the applicants to consider or suggest, or suggest solutions, not necessarily because that was necessary to meet the requirements for a special permit, but because he wanted to be helpful. And, and, and I think he, those are important traits. I mean, and, and, and from um, the emails that we've exchanged, I, mean, I, I certainly get the, the strong impression that these words are all true. And so uh, I'll just add the final line of our letter to you. Volunteers like you are the kinds of residents that make Arlington much better than it would be otherwise. We were delighted to welcome you when you were appointed and we are even more delighted to express our deep gratitude for all that you have done for us. I mean, so, so once again, um, thank you, Mr. Mills. I mean, and and um, uh, Ms. Ms. Mahan. <clears throat> Sorry, I have a tickle tonight that won't go away. Um, I also want to thank Mr. Mills, Kevin, for um, working over five years, if not longer, on the Zoning Board of Appeals, as well as, you know, for the town of Arlington. Um, I didn't attend each and every ZBA meeting, um, but the ones that I did, I definitely was impressed of, um, of how you made the transition um, 
from attending associate into a full member, um, not just with MUGAR, but sometimes just with residents' um, appearances um, before the zoning board. And I really would echo what the chair has said about, you know, working on projects, um, you know, to make them better, not to just to make them pass, and, and, and to make them better for everybody. Um, and I'm really going to miss that. Um, but I am so appreciative of the many, many, many hours. I mean, a lot of people, um, they hear all these different, you know, uh, AHA, ZBA, all these um, acronyms, um, and don't really get a sense of um, exactly what we get from our professional volunteers here in town that so many people who love to live here or do business here, um, that's a large part of the reason why Arlington is the way it is. So we're, we're going to miss you, but um, know you'll be successful. And I, I wish you uh, good health and, and the best of luck of everything in the future. And thank you again, Kevin. Mr. Corsi. Thank you, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yeah, and I also want to thank you, um, Mr. Mills, for, for your service, Kevin, for your service on the, on the Zoning Board of Appeals. I had attended a number of the MUGAR hearings and so I was impressed when you, when you spoke and what you added to those meetings and, and also the, just the, the stamina, frankly, because there's a lot of late meetings and, and the members often didn't talk until later in the meetings and, and you always added a great deal to those discussions. And, and um, when you see how your colleagues wrote about you, um, that, that shows you the respect that they had for you on, on, on the ZBA as well. So I want to wish you the best of luck and, and thank you again for your service. So, so with that, Mr. Mills, if you want to say a few words, you're welcome to. Uh, well, I had a really good time on the board. It often was very tedious, but uh, the other members really uh, very diligent. I thought we all worked very well together. We were assisted very well by um, Doug Hine, Rick Valorelli, you know, the guys in the uh, uh, building department, they're always uh, right there to chip in and help us clarify difficult matters. And really, Patrick Hanlon and uh, Christian just carry a lot of the water in that uh, group. <clears throat> I really learned a lot working with them, and it was a privilege. And uh, thank you for your well wishes. I'm down in Plymouth now, and I'm going to try and join the ZBA down here. <laughs> great, great, great. Well, I mean, our loss is their gain. You know, man, we're all we're all working to stay together, so, so I'm sure we'll be seeing you around at some point in time. So, so thank you very much. I mean, and and uh, have a good night, happy holidays, and happy new year. And so, we will now move on to item number three on the agenda: uh, presentation on um, 10 Sunny Sunnyside Avenue. Um, and so, uh, who do we have with us tonight? Miss Recker, maybe, or Attorney Hine. Actually, well, actually, I guess Attorney Hyman does uh, perhaps want to tell us a few things about what, um, how we, 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 excuse me, how we should proceed. Mr. Heim? Thank you, Mr. Chair. I'll be brief in just reminding the board of the board's limited role with respect to site approval or sometimes called project eligibility. In short, the board has 30 days from the date it receives a notice from Mass Housing of a application for project eligibility uh, by the folks like folks at the Housing Club of Arlington to uh, examine and consider the site location for general um, appropriateness and eligibility. I provided you a, a, a little memo. We don't need to go through it all about what the criteria for eligibility are, um, but it's a more generalized review. It's from, you know, 100 feet up as opposed to the type of review that the ZBA or the Conservation Commission would engage in with respect to very specific details of a more refined plan. If, for example, the select board had deep concerns about the specific location or the applicant couldn't dem uh, demonstrate site control, those would be things that the board um, would want to register concerns about. The board can engage in any dialogue that it wants with the applicant, and it can certainly and should ask any questions it has of the applicant or of uh, town departments and staff. Um, I don't want to speak out of turn. This seems like a more straightforward project than, than perhaps some others have been. Um, but um, while we have 30 days, the board has in times past uh, asked for a little additional time 
if you'd like to make sure that your um, letter either supporting or opposing or just providing general comment on eligibility needs a little bit more time. It's obviously something that we would wanna to talk to the applicants about, but it's not uncommon, particularly if uh, the review period is sort of truncated by the holiday season. Um, and finally, you kind of have two options and depending on how the board feels from its discussion tonight, you can either uh, provide comment and trust that I will develop a letter and this uh, chair or the vice chair together will sign off on the letter and send it to mass housing or uh, you can take a little bit more time and have another agenda item where you would uh, approve a draft of the letter um, before it goes out. But those are the options available to you, depending on how you feel about the project, how much information you have, and um, what, if anything else, you need. I'm, I'm sure the Director of Planning and Community Development, Ms. Ricker, and the applicants uh, will have more detail on uh, some substantive things for your consideration. Uh, but that's the general sort of outline process and role of the select board. And again, folks should just keep in mind, select board is just taking a sort of 500 foot view of this, talking about general appropriateness of the site, uh, the details of things like traffic studies or stormwater management will be examined uh, by the uh, Zoning Board of Appeals. Thank you. Thank you for the time. And, and um, you may have gotten by email um, Ms. Bricker um, memo on, on the project. So that's for our consideration. So at this point, maybe we can bring in I mean, um, uh, Ms. Ms. O'Connor I mean, and she can tell us who else to bring in uh, for the presentation. I see Erica Swartz here too, so. Yeah. Good evening, Mr. Chairman, uh, Mrs. Mahan, Mr. DeCourcy, um, Mary Stanley O'Connor for the applicant, the Housing Corporation of Arlington. I first wanna thank you for taking the time tonight in this short meeting to uh, hear the presentation that we have and I wish you happy holidays. Um, you know, it's my uh, pleasure actually to represent the Housing Corporation of Arlington, being a resident of this town and good work that they do. Uh, this project uh, that they're proposing at 10 Sunnyside Ave uh, is um, 43 units, all affordable. Uh, some at 60% of median income, some at 30%. Uh, and what is important, and Erica Schwartz, who's the uh, new acting director, uh, can speak to the project and she'll introduce the architects. But I would suggest to you that um, this is really a, a tremendous and great use of this site. You probably are familiar with the fact that this is in a B4 zone, which is an automotive use zone. And our zoning code talks about uh, trying to change B4 uses to other uses. And where we are um, by way of being kind of an MBTA type community and that particular area is really appropriate for this type of housing. Um, the housing corporation has done some tremendous projects in town. Uh, Erica will go over them and uh, review them. I think you probably have seen the new construction down at Broadway and in Downing Square, uh, but that's the type of quality that the housing corporation is committed to. And I'm gonna turn this over to Erica and then she will introduce um, our arch the architects on the project. Thank you so much for giving us this opportunity. You're welcome. Thank you. Hello, Ms. Schwartz. Thanks, Mary. Yes, hi, I'm so glad to be here. Thank you for putting this on the agenda, um, getting this in before the holidays. So um, I'm actually gonna invite our architects on now because they have the presentation. They're gonna, I think they were gonna be presenting the presentation. Um, I could call it up myself, but it's it's Nick Behrens and Rochelle Ain. Should hopefully you see them. And then Gabby Geller is our real estate development consultant. She also happens to be an Arlington resident. And hopefully they're all, hopefully you see them all there. Um, Gabby might not be speaking much, but she's on hand in case there's more technical questions that you might have. Uh, so that you know, uh, the housing corporation has control of the site, they purchased the property. Thank you. All right, I, I see Nick and Rochelle. Hi, everyone. And I'll go ahead and, and share my screen, Erica, and then you can just tell me when you're ready to uh, advance. Oh, uh, maybe if someone can enable screen sharing, that would be great. 
Great. And I should say they're from UTL, um, architecture firm, and we've had a fantastic experience with them. I think, think we're really lucky to have them on this project. Um, all right, so that's loading up. Can everyone see that? Yes. Great. So um, I think everyone's familiar with the Housing Corporation, but just for a reminder, um, our mission is sitting up there and we were founded in 1986. Um, didn't start actually being active in housing development um, for a few years. And in the early years, I think it was, it was more programmatic folks uh, focused and first time home buyer kind of stuff. We are really community-based and community-driven. Um, we are of Arlington. Our focus is on Arlington. We engage a lot of local people in our committees and our board um, and our work. The whole point is to reflect what the local needs are and to be of and for Arlington. Um, so right now, we have 150 units of affordable housing. They are found throughout every neighborhood, and, and I'll, you'll see some pictures in a little bit of some of those. Um, 102 of those were acquisition of existing properties and rehabilitation to preserve them and restrict them as affirmative, uh, affordable housing in perpetuity. And then 48 are the new construction that Mary referenced, our um, Downing Square Broadway initiative project that just <coughs> completely leased up earlier this year. And then we also have a range of social service programs to help families remain stable in their homes and access a range of services. And we're going to be ramping up in the new year some civic engagement activities, some tenant councils in our own properties with our own tenants, but also just engagement of other residents in Arlington um, to advocate and, and participate um, in town processes and state processes around affordable housing and other related issues. We can go on to the next slide. So this is just an overview of some of the homes we created in our earlier years when we were focused on these smaller properties, you know, buildings of two units, four units, five units, um, when it was much, when it was financially feasible to do that, which is not anymore. And it's, it's really special because it means we do have affordable housing that's just part of the natural fabric of the town um, throughout every neighborhood of the town. So that's a few exterior shots and, and one interior shot of a home that turned over recently. Um, you know, they're just like the, the housing we're all used to um, in the area. So next slide. Um, this was, uh, this is Capitol Square um, on Mass Ave, 252 Mass Ave is where our office is in the, the building that's further away in this photo. Um, and this was our first larger development. We acquired this in 2016. It's 32 units among three buildings. So that was the start of us um, kind of moving into the modern era as far as what the market will allow and really advancing the impact and creating more affordable housing at once as the housing prices continued to worsen. Um, so that was an acquisition and a major rehab. And then moving on to the next slide, um, came the Downing Square Broadway Initiative project, which was our first new construction project, a total of 48 units among two sites and three buildings. You can see the buildings that look similar to each other. You might recognize if you've driven past, they're both on Lowell Street and then the building at 117 Broadway. Um, so that again was our first new construction project. Um, it was the second time we had used the low income housing tax credit program, which is the federal program that is the most widely used subsidy program across the country for affordable housing, and it's the most impactful subsidy. You get the most money per unit, but it only really works if you do slightly larger projects. It financially doesn't pencil out for you know a five, 10, even 15 unit development. So for Capitol Square and this project and the project we're talking about tonight at, on Sunnyside Ave, we'd be pursuing that financing source and building on the experience and knowledge and know-how that we have from these prior developments. Um, so the next slide just shows you a few interior shots of the DSBI project. It's beautiful, light-filled, um, really feels nice to be in those units. And we can go on to the next slide. So just an overview, moving on to why we're here tonight, um, 10 Sunnyside Ave, as Mary said, we did, we do own the property. We um, acquired it in October. You probably know it's a former auto body shop, um, was purchased by another entity that had planned to development, but their sort of business plans changed, so then they put it on the market. Um, and we're proposing there to remove everything that's there now um, and create 43 new apartments um, with car parking and bike parking. 
with a community room um, and with some open space that you'll see in, in future slides that's a, basically a deck garden um, for the tenants there. There really isn't a sidewalk there at all. The street just kind of melds into the front of the building. So we'd be restoring that, creating a sidewalk. Um, the goal is to be highly energy efficient and in fact reach passive house standards. Um, and Util, our architecture firm, is one of the firms that's really on the forefront of that. They have on their staff, I think, if I'm speaking correctly, you can correct me when you come up. Nick and Rochelle are both, I think, passive house certified. We are, um, yes. So, yes, thanks. So, um, we chose the firm because they brought so many levels of expertise, and this was one of them. Um, this will be 100% affordable um, under that low income housing tax credit program. So the maximum income household would be at 60% of the area median income, um, maximum to qualify. And I just put some examples here of what that means in, in this year's um, dollars as far as HUD every year, HUD updates those figures and it, it can shift a little bit from year to year. But as an example, for a household of two, that means no more than around $67,000. A household of four, no more than around $84,000. Um, but we'll also be reserving some units for even lower income families of a, a maximum income of 30% AMI, um, where if you're that low income, there's so many waiting lists, it's just really, really, really hard, if not impossible, to find a suitable place to live in greater Boston, um, and, and certainly in Arlington. Um, so next slide. So just wanted to go over what our anticipated timeline is. And of course, it's sometimes hard to predict these things, but we think this is pretty likely if things move as we expect. Um, so we're having these informal convert, not, you know, less formal outside of the official zoning process um, conversations now. Um, we had a meeting with uh, some abutters the other week. We're gonna do a little more abutter outreach. Um, and then throughout 2023, we'll be working to advance our design. You know, hopefully we will get our zoning in the next few months. Um, we will then be applying for those low income housing tax credits and other subsidies as soon as the next funding round comes up. Um, a lot of this timeline does depend on when we get those subsidies. Um, they're all administered by the state, so the state awards these federal low-income housing tax credits and a range of other subsidies that we'll need. And I say when and not if, because I have full confidence this project will get funded. It aligns exactly with what the state is looking to fund, but they always have a major backlog because there just isn't enough money budgeted by the state to accommodate all the legitimate projects they get. Um, Arlington hasn't been funded in a few years since, since our Downing Square project. I think we will be very well received and hopefully get through the first time we apply, but not guaranteed at all. Uh, they do know that we're out there. We, we have um, communicated with them and they're fully aware that this project is planning to be in the queue. We actually um, submitted a pre-application uh, just a couple months ago. We were not invited to submit for the full application because they were so backlogged, but we're kind of on the radar of the state, which is a good thing. Um, so if, if all goes well with that, um, we would apply in January 2024 and be get an award in the summer of 2024 and then close on that financing and start construction by the end, very end of, of 2024. Um, so we'd anticipate completing construction in early 2026. We anticipate maybe a year long construction process and having tenants move in shortly thereafter um, in you know, late winter, early spring of 2026. And then this project would be taken on by our property management firm, Peabody Properties. They are a large firm that's able to grow with us. Um, so uh, we've already alerted them that this could be coming in a few years and they'll be able to grow with us when the time comes. So I think that was it for me. And now I wanted to turn it over to you, Teal, so they can get into some of the details of the design. Um, and you can think about what we're seeing, what we're thinking. Great, thanks, Erica. Um, so yeah, my name is Nick Burens. I'm an associate principal at UTO. Uh, we are about a 70 person architecture and planning firm in downtown Boston. And um, I manage our affordable housing practice. We've been building affordable housing for nonprofit developers like the Housing Corporation for over 15 years in greater Boston and beyond in New England. 
Uh, so really excited to have this opportunity to partner with Erica and her organization and do our first project in Arlington. Um, and as Erica mentioned, you know, we, we've developed a real sort of affinity and expertise for sustainable design. And, um, you know, we're seeing Passive House and similar uh, strategies really become uh, the de facto standard for affordable housing. So we're also excited to, to further that uh, endeavor here with this project. Um, I'll just give a brief sort of um, introduction to the site. I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with it, but just to sort of frame why we think this is a great opportunity for redevelopment and affordable housing. So you'll see here, uh, you know, a map of the neighborhood. Um, Sunnyside is right off of the Broadway corridor, obviously, um, you know, which is, um, you know, an increasingly dense commercial corridor. We're only about a quarter of a mile from Mass Ave, which, you know, I'm sure you all know is an important uh, commercial corridor both for Arlington and for the broader region. Um, we've got a stop and shop right across the street in Somerville here. We've got amazing access to the Alewife Brook um, Greenway and all of the green spaces and parks that are associated with that. Um, some pretty good access to bus routes, both on Mass Ave and Broadway, and then both uh, the Red Line at Alewife and the newly opened Green Line extension over at Tufts are about a mile away from the site. So, um, you know, good, really good transit access, really good access to neighborhood amenities. And, you know, I think this is just a great location for, um, you know, building new housing. Uh, zooming in a little bit on the site itself, um, for those of you that know the area, this is kind of an, an interesting little pocket right on the border of Arlington. So, uh, as you'll see sort of at the top of the slide, you know, a lot of the, um, you know, historic residential fabric, uh, you know, smaller single family homes and smaller multifamily two to four unit homes in the area, but not directly in this area, right along Broadway. There um, has been some redevelopment, both with uh, the Leahy Medical Building over here, as well as this building at the corner of Broadway and Somerville. But a lot of these older buildings, um, you know, including our own site are sort of pre-existing from the historic industrial use in this neighborhood. And, you know, as we understand, the goals of the town, you know, there's really a desire to see, you know, redevelopment of this type in this area. So we think this project is very well suited to meet the goals of the town in terms of, um, you know, furthering uh, the advancement of this neighborhood. Um, and as I mentioned, you know, we've got the bike path here on, along the Greenway. We've got the cemetery right across the street. Um, you know, again, sort of a really nice, uh, well amenitized neighborhood to, um, you know, provide residents with access to open space to the grocery store across the brook um, and to public transit. Um, the site itself, um, you know, is in a bit of disrepair at the moment. The, the historic use of the site has been as a garage and an auto body repair shop for, I think, close to 100 years at this point. Um, and, uh, you know, the building itself uh, takes up, you know, about a quarter of the site maybe, and then there's sort of an open paved parking area uh, you know, with some debris and uh, garbage that's accumulated, you know, sort of a lot of room for improvement here. Uh, as Erica mentioned, there's no public sidewalk in front of the site or really for the continuation uh, of Sunnyside going down uh, the street there. So, you know, we're looking um, at, you know, enhancing uh, pedestrian access along the street and, and really um, improving uh, the urban character of the site. A few photos here for your reference. You'll see the existing building here. It's a one-story auto body repair shop. And then the open areas of the site, which are a little bit overgrown at the moment. <clears throat> Excuse me, next door is uh, Aramont Fuel, which is a, a fuel oil business. Um, so again, sort of in that um, you know character of the, the uh, light industrial context. Uh, and a couple more photos here from the interior of the site. So as Erica mentioned, um, we made an initial submission to the state, which has prompted um, our request for project eligibility review with you. Um, and that uh, submission was very preliminary from a design standpoint, really not uh, a lot more developed than sort of this simple massing that you see here, but the fundamental um, characteristics of the project really haven't changed as we continue to develop the design. Uh, so it's a five-story building, uh, right around 50,000 square feet. And as Erica mentioned, 43 units um, the distribution of which are really targeted towards meeting the state's affordable housing goals uh, for families, which tend to bias the unit mix uh, towards larger two and three bedroom family style units as opposed to uh, smaller, you know, one bedroom studios. 
Um, we've got about 21 bike parking space, uh, sorry, uh, automobile parking spaces, which is uh, about a 0.5 ratio for our residential units to parking spaces. Um, and then, you know, quite an abundance of bike parking to meet the town's requirements there. Um, and then uh, a fairly sizable uh, open space roof deck on the second floor that you can see here in concept in which I'll show some more views of as we move forward. Um, and again, really interested in, um, you know, furthering the project sustainability, uh, making a very energy efficient, um, low carbon footprint, as well as, you know, um, trying to achieve really good uh, indoor air quality and health outcomes for the residents. So that's, you know, an important part of the sustainable outlook for the project as well. Um, I'll walk through the floor plans of the building here. Um, so this is a floor plan of the ground floor. And you'll see in light blue the interior areas of the building. So sort of the core of the building here and then another uh, egress stair that comes down in the back. The light gray here is all parking at grade, uh, but concealed and covered and underneath the footprint of the building. So there's no sort of exposed surface parking here. It's all uh, protected from view and, and underneath the roof of the building, if you will. Um, we've got ample bike parking, as I mentioned, so some interior, um, you know, bike parking spaces here in the back of the building, as well as sort of an exterior bike corral in the back of the space. Um, we're also proposing as part of this project a small uh, mixed-use office component, which HCA is intending to occupy for their own use, um, as well as some property management space, and then, you know, sort of all of the typical infrastructure that you need for a building of this size, trash rooms, electrical rooms, uh, you know, water and fire protection and connections, um, all that types of stuff. Uh, as I mentioned, you know, we're planning to improve and, and add to the public sidewalk uh, in the public right of way here and uh, hopefully add additional street trees to continue some of the uh, public plantings that have already been started on sunny side, as well as provide some planting buffers around the rear of the site and in the side yards as well. Uh, on the second floor, uh, is a large community room, uh, which would be for the use of the residents, but also available on a reservation basis for, um, you know, community events you know, for the larger community or uh, on an invitation basis. Um, and that's accessed directly off the stairs and elevator and has uh, doors out to this large um, common roof deck space, which we think is going to be a great amenity, both for the residents to use, but also really a sort of a, um, a visual amenity for the neighborhood and a way to soften uh, the, the visual impact of the building and the redevelopment and, and create a little bit of a relationship and dialogue between this site and some of these green spaces that I mentioned that are directly adjacent um, to the project, such as the, uh, the Baroque and Cemetery. Um, you'll see on the rest of the floor plan are our mix of one, two, and three bedroom apartments. Um, and you see there's a sort of scattered around uh, the floor plan and, and color coded here with the lighter tone being the one bed or two bed and three bed. Uh, and really that pattern just repeats itself as we go up the building. Uh, so, you know, we try to organize these buildings as efficiently as possible. Um, levels three and four are really uh, just duplicates of one another. And then on the fifth floor, um, as you'll see in some of the three-dimensional uh, three representations, we're stepping um, the front of the building back a little bit to provide some visual relief from the height and scale of the building. And that was, uh, you know, something that we picked up on uh, through our review of the town zoning code and um, directives about how to approach buildings of this size and scale in this context. And so we think this is a, a helpful tool to um, help the building sit better in the neighborhood. Um, on the roof, we're already starting to think about reserving area for photovoltaics, which you'll see in the light gray tone here, as well as doing some very preliminary space planning for uh, mechanical equipment that would live on the roof um, and be located centrally to uh, not really be visible from the street um, and uh, avoid any, any visual impact there. So here's an initial massing of the building uh, in three dimensions. Uh, so you'll see Sunnyside here on the front and Broadway in the back. Um, and I think as we've been developing the design of the building, um, we've tried to uh, sort of focus in on a couple of key design principles. I would say probably uh, the foremost one being the activation of the public street. And the, you know, as I think you saw in the photos, you know, this is really it's historically been industrial. Uh, it's not a very inviting space to walk. We, Heard from some of the neighbors, you know, their experiences walking down Sunnyside. So really, um, 
you know, the idea here is to create an active street edge to come out, you know, with the building to meet the street and make this feel uh, more like an urban neighborhood, uh, more walkable and welcoming for pedestrians. Um, at the same time, you know, I think it's really important to us to find a way with the architecture and the design to tie the building together. You know, we obviously want to provide vehicle parking and do that in a way that's screened from the street. So coming up with a material treatment that, um, you know, both accommodates building entrances and the office space, but then ties uh, the parking area together in one unified whole has been really important. Um, as I mentioned, you know, on the upper levels, we're, you know, trying to find ways to uh, make this building feel as contextual as possible. You know, we're obviously one of the larger buildings being built in the neighborhood here, but um, using strategies uh, for facade design where we break down, you know, the larger uh, elevation into smaller constituent parts, either by subdividing, you know, vertically or horizontally, as I mentioned with this step back here uh, to uh, both provide uh, some relief in the frontage of the building, um, as well as uh, the perceived height from the street. Um, and then lastly, you know, I think the, we're really excited about this second floor green space. We think this is gonna be a great um, resource for the residents in the building to have this commonly available outdoor area. And again, just um, a great sort of visual amenity to the residents uh, who live in the, in the residential neighborhood where they're on some side to have some greenery along the street, to have this feel like a little bit of a softer edge, and to not have the entirety of the building coming out uh, to the street. We've been studying very closely uh, the relationship that some of the you know preceding development has created with the street edge here, as well as well, you know what some of the historical uh, industrial context has created. And I think what we've tried to do here is strike a balance between. Um, you know, being responsive to neighborhood context, but also hopefully setting a precedent for future development in this area and uh, creating uh, a, you know, a project that uh, other developers uh, will look to as this area and this neighborhood continues to, to change and, and see redevelopment. Uh, so a couple of views here um, for your consideration. This is uh, from Broadway, uh, looking down Sunnyside, where you'll see the existing building uh, on the corner here. Uh, with our new proposed building uh, set back from the street and you'll see the main residential entrance here where my cursor is uh, the proposed office space here on the ground level again um, you know we sort of split the facade in half here and then pushed the bulk of the building back behind the green space to provide some um, relief and scale and then uh, access to the parking area uh, through this really nice sort of perforated brick screen wall here along the street uh, a similar view here, this time standing on Sunnyside and looking back towards Broadway. So this would be the cemetery in the distance here. Um, and here, I think you can really see, you know, this uh, desire and intention to, you know, continue uh, the, the public, um, you know, uh, pedestrian right of way here uh, as much as possible and to, you know, really create a framework for future redevelopment in the neighborhood uh, to create a welcoming urban streetscape um, and really bring the building out to the street, make it feel like it's part of the neighborhood. Uh, and uh, just another overview here of the project where again, you can see the main residential entrance here uh, in the middle of the building, office space here on the left, uh, bringing you know, the smaller portion of the facade out to the street with a larger portion recessed, and then the green space in front of it, and then access to uh, the parking below. So I think that's a, uh, a pretty good summary of where we're at in the design process um, and uh, look forward to hearing your comments or questions. Thank you. So I'll turn to my colleagues, you know. Ms. Wong. <clears throat> um, thank you, it's very impressive and I see you have quite a timeline um, laid out. Uh, I've heard from a, a few residents on Sunnyside who are definitely looking forward to meet future meetings um, to hear more about the project. Just sort of um, as a preview, um, I, the I guess the top three or four issues that I've heard were, and you've touched on some of them, the parking, um, which is sort of in the envelope of the building, and I 
probably missed this and you said it and I apologize. Is that ground level or is that subgrade and approximately how many parking spaces? So all of the parking is at grade, but it's all entirely screened from the street and it's 21 spaces currently. So it's about, uh, you know, half uh, point, point 0.5 parking spaces per residential unit, if you will. Okay. And then um, I don't want an answer to this tonight because it's has, you know, it's not under the purview of um, the select board, but um, one of the positives is also a, a somewhat of a con in, in the sense of um, near the owl wife and in, in the greenway, uh, as well as the, the flooding issues that, that are down there. Um, although just from what you presented here tonight, it really seems like um, you're working within the existing framework <clears throat> of what's there anyways. You're just building up more, not necessarily out. And, and I noticed the setbacks um, that you've highlighted um, in, in the plans. Do you anticipate that those, and I know anything is, everything is subject to change, but the setbacks that you presented here tonight with this building, is that something we can pretty much s sort of bank on maybe with a little bit of a variation, but that, that will be what's incorporated into the final plan? I, I can answer that, Ms. Mahan. They will, the setbacks that appear on the plan will be what we're presenting to the ZBA. Thank you. For approval. Okay, and then um, con congrats on having um, Attorney O'Connor uh, sort of help herald you through this process um, because she's worked on um, and is currently working on um, some other um, ho housing developments here in Arlington. So she's very well versed um, besides being an Arlington resident and advocate for the town with you know, neighbors concerns and, and, and with any project it's going to be a temporarily th temporary thing, but um, it, undoubtedly there will be some sort of um, disturbing or relocation of the neighborhood of some of the rodents that will come out during the project. Um, but I know that uh, similar to other projects that we have here in Arlington, you'll have some sort of plan for that. Absolutely. Thank okay. you, Ms. Mahan. We will. Absolutely. Yes. And I know. Um, Attorney O'Connor is dealing with that with the Schwab Mill. It's kind of a <laughs> similar topography yeah. in terms of size of building near a waterway, um, abutting neighborhoods. Uh, and I only had one call uh, during that current project, and uh, it was something that was taken care of right away. And then um, the only other thing that would, there's no way you could determine it tonight, but as you go through, uh, the subsequent boards that you um, will go through in the next year or two. Uh, the other question that I got a lot of is uh, traffic impacts and um, what I've been saying in terms of road closures, you know, where Broadway is a somewhat main thoroughfare uh, that people come in Arlington and go out of Arlington. And what I've said to residents is, you know, pay, pay attention to, and businesses, uh, the plans as they move forward, but I, I would only anticipate similar to any of the other projects like the Arlington High School, Schwamm Mill, um, even Downing Square, with the exception of um, perhaps a temporary uh, a few hours or days. Um, I don't see anything in the plans um, as well as construction vehicles coming in and out and materials getting delivered. I don't see any large projection of totally... Uh, restricting access on Broadway for any uh, extended period of times. And is, is that what you all anticipate? I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't think so. And I can tell you that we've already had niche engineering do a complete traffic impact study uh, for this development and there'll be no um, impact at all from this project on the traffic in that area based on their uh, professional opinion. You know, the Alewife, um, Broadway intersection is one of the worst intersections cr for crash da um, data, uh, but it's, we're not going to worsen it. Um, if we can't improve it, unfortunately, but it's not this project isn't going to impact it in any way. Okay, and just one small little housekeeping thing, and it's, it's not a big thing, but it is. It's, it's sort of similar to um, when people come before us and they 
profess on and on of how they know about the city of Arlington and the city and the city's doing a good job when in reality it's a town. And the, just as the slides go forward, um, Sunnyside, all one word, not, not two words. Um, it, just because it's a small thing, but like, you know, one of the good things I can say is we have our HCA director um, who's based out of Arlington and is, is very well versed. We have attorney um, O'Connor um, who not only has, you know, years and years of experience with different projects in Arlington and is an Arlington resident. Um, she, she's very well aware of that, but uh, I just noticed it in the slides. It's not a biggie, but it, it's the kind of thing that you'd be surprised. And, and I think sure. Attorney O'Connor will know. <laughs> understood, <laughs> understood. Yeah, okay. I, I, I don't mean to be well, nitpicky. Yeah. yeah, it's a court reporter in me, just for consistency's <laughs> sake, too. I, I don't want somebody saying, oh, you, you know, you haven't used the proper legal street name, and even though it's just a plan, so. Um, and again, I'm, I'm very excited, excited that we have our, have our executive director from um, the Housing Authority um, sort of championing this um, projects and certainly we have other projects we can look towards as you cited on Broadway Downing Square as well as the two family projects um, amongst the town that HCA as well as the Housing Authority um, has been doing uh, and I guess just as an aside to the town manager um, if we could uh, just for curiosity sake um, between now and maybe before town meeting starts, so there's no rush on it. If the board, if you could just sort of email us uh, current housing units the town has. Um, I know we've applied and said that we thought we were there and there's been an issue with water bodies and things like that. Um, but if you could just sort of give us a ballpark um, what that magic number is, recognizing it could change, but just, you know, so as we start to put in, um, and I'm, I'm very excited that all 43 of these units in some form or another are uh, affordable. Uh, so I wanna thank everyone for that, and I apologize for having so many questions, but uh, I, I did tell a couple of town meeting members who contacted me to follow the process and any public documents. So uh, I'm just gonna have the select board's office um, forward the memorandum that we received from our uh, planning and community development director, Ms. Rickard, just for them to have something as they move forward. So thank you to you all, and thank you, Mr. Chairman. I apologize for all <laughs> big, long questions. No problem. And before I turn to anyone else, so a quick question, I mean, since we talked about setting aside being one word, what is the suffix for Broadway? Is there a suffix for it? I mean, there's none, right? Not so that I know of. Not that I know of either. So it's not like a street avenue or anything. It's just, <coughs> just Broadway. It's just Broadway. Broadway. Yeah, but that's it's what not I thought broad. To. Way. <laughs> <laughs> that's for the naughty Santa. You guys weren't here before the meeting. But our so chair is, is one of the naughty elves. Sorry. <laughs> Go ahead. I get in. This is the Corsi. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and thank you for the presentation this evening. Um, it looks like a very exciting project, and I, I just have a um, couple of questions. You mentioned the butter outreach earlier on, and that there's going to be more of it. But can you tell us what the extent of it has been to date, and maybe the time frame going sure. forward? Sure. Uh, what we did was we took all of the names who were in the who would receive legal notice. Um, as to the project and we sent them letters and we had a meeting in the selectmen in the lion's hearing room about a week a little over a week ago and presented this plan three people came the three were very positive about the project they had some comments and suggestions and we're going to hold another about uh, by zoom another about our outreach um, as well okay and thank i've you. since learned actually from one of those attendees that there is a neighborhood list serve for sunnyside mm -hmm. So we'll reach out to that list um, to invite them to a Zoom meeting. And I would also like to say, you know, anyone who's interested or concerned, I always, I welcome emails. I'm happy to have people contact me directly if they have questions or concerns or anything like that. Okay, great, thank you. And then another question on, this is a review period for Mass Housing and, and it's a comment period for us. Has Mass Housing come out to perform the site visit yet? And, if not, when are they due to come out? Yeah, so the uh, Mass Housing administers this, but it's the DHCD actually does the site visit. So we just had that um, this week, Monday, 
um, and it's really just them making sure the site is real and it's it's a very minimal visit just to make sure that they, they see the site and it's it's real and it's it's as it seems like it was from the initial project eligibility letter so that happened um, it went smoothly and um, whatever write-up happens after that should be should be happening internally at, at the state level this week okay and and just a comment for you and, and maybe a comment to my colleagues too um, I, I have I think a number of us have, have visited the sites on Broadway and Downing Square and if that's an indication of the type of construction I, I was very impressed with the other buildings that uh, have been put up and, and, and the work that you did there. Um, in terms of going forward, we have a 30-day period, as you know, to submit comments. And, and I think from what you're hearing, people sound favorably inclined. However, um, the 30-day period ends on January 8th, which is a Sunday. That pushes to Monday the 9th. That's our next meeting. I'm just wondering if, if, if there was a discussion here about looking to extend that period by a few days so that we could receive any input from departments would you have any objection to our doing that no we understand that um, the board would like to have ample time and this is holiday season if it was if we could get it in shortly thereafter that would be very helpful okay thank you attorney uh, okay thank you, mr Hurd. thank you thank you for the presentation i actually had an opportunity to do a Zoom meeting a few weeks back and get the, the preview of the presentation and was able to, to uh, have my questions answered at that time. So I do appreciate your time again for the very detailed presentation here tonight. Um, you know, it's for the ZBA to review the technical details of the project. I think for our, this board, it's really to look at the project as a whole and see if it, if it jives with what we're with the town's goals and what we're hearing from residents and we've said this time and time again in many different aspects of of items that have been before us affordable housing is on the tops of the hearts and minds of a lot of residents in Arlington if that might be the number one issue that we hear from residents and a goal that really almost all Arlington residents are looking to move towards um, but it's difficult and sometimes the discussions are hard to have and some of the residents don't want to understand what it takes to create more affordable housing units we don't have a lot of space and so to have a project like this with 43 and I'm sorry if I misquote the number but 43 affordable housing units a few of which are at 30 percent AMI is really a blessing towards our goal of creating affordable housing especially for the extreme uh, extremely affordable nature and I think that this project f the designs have clearly reflected some of the values that are important to Arlington I think the architects took took to heart and listened to town residents and looked at other projects and certainly took the wise advice of attorney Wynn Stanley O'Connor as to what is important to Arlington residents with the bicycle parking and the open space um, the setbacks and I think th this project within the they found a good location there aren't a few, many locations in Arlington they, where you could build a building of this size but I think you've found one and I think based on what we've seen we can make it work you have to continue to work with neighbors and allay concerns of that any abutters might have because there are different uses here and it's a, it's a starkly different use to what it's been in the past and there are other auto shops around there that want to make sure that they can continue to maintain their businesses and run their businesses like they had for many years but I am excited to see this project move forward I think it is something that could be beneficial for the town if done in the, in the way that's as it's been presented you know, the ACA has a great name in Arlington so we certainly trust the work that will come out of the ACA and um, again I look forward to getting more affordable housing in Arlington and seeing how this project as it progresses thank you mr. chair thank you mr. Hearn yes and I, I was uh, I had a private 
um, presentation also, so I got to uh, ask a lot of questions and, and give some um, insights as to my vision for what that area could become, you know, and, and uh, a lot more of um, a Broadway. And as I mentioned, it's interesting how this kind of fits in with some of the ideas that came out of the Broadway corridor design contest, you know, and uh, almost all the designs had be some kind of larger structure there that was kind of like the gateway uh, to Arlington. And I think it's really nice in this case that, that the gateway is, is a building that's all affordable housing. You know, and, and there's, uh, as you mentioned too in the presentation, that it could be a trigger you know, for other kinds of development. So I think maybe some concerns mean from residents is that we sometimes are converting you know, business properties mean into housing and thereby you know, precluding the ability to you know, have uh, increased the, the revenue that we get from businesses. Mean. But I think this could stimulate more development that would also bring in uh, other businesses. I, mean, I know you have some office space in there, so it's not, you know, gonna, you're not going to lose all of the uh, potential for um, taxes from, from um, businesses. But like I said, I think it can stimulate more development, even if not in just that location, but maybe in further up and down um, um, Broadway. So, so this is um, I'm, I'm enthusiastic about it, and you know, and thank you to my colleagues for having uh, allowing this you know, uh, to take place tonight on what's supposed to be a shorter uh, meeting for us. But it did come up on the eighth, you know, and I didn't want us to be in a position where we wanted to say something and we had uh, missed the deadline. You know, so. So, um, so here we are, I mean, and we'll decide, you know, um, whether to um, ask for a delay or, or I guess another possibility is that we could meet, meet a little bit earlier um, um, before our next meeting, but I think we'll decide that. So uh, I'll ask um, uh, Tom, Mr. Manager, if you have any questions or comments that you want to make or? Uh, no, I also had a previous presentation. I think it looks like a good project and um, I'm excited to see that's uh, more affordable housing being built in town. Great, thank you. So, um, any other comments or questions for me from, from our guests? No, thank you. Thank you for, yes. for scheduling this. I know I, we appreciate you trying to, to move it forward, and if it has to be delayed a few days, that's fine, but I appreciate this time. Th thank you very much to all of you, and happy holidays. Welcome. Thank you. You as well. Thank you. So, uh, so how do we want to move forward, uh, Mr. Yeah, th thank you, Mr. Chairman. I, I, I think we're moving towards a, a letter of support, but I think given the time frame and, and the deadline, I'd, I'd move that we request an extension until no later than the end of the week of the 9th and that we um, perhaps, I don't know if you're going to be working with, with town council and, and, and Ms. Ricker, but if there's a letter um, available or draft available for approval, on the 9th, if we approve it, we could send it out that week. Second. Right. You know, so, I mean, I'm certainly fine with that. You know, and so I think, uh, I think it's reasonable to expect that we could, we'll get that, that um, extension. Mr. Mr. Heim. Mr. Heim. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Just so I can understand uh, what I am receiving from the board tonight uh, in terms of my, my read of motion by Mr. Corsi and the board's general tenor is that I will work with the Director of Planning and Community Development to draft a letter of support for this project's uh, site approval, but that I will also ask for an extension from Mass Housing with the consent of the applicant uh, or the agreement of the applicant to the end of that week so that we could finalize the, the target of finalizing a letter um, on that Monday, January 9th. Is that a, a fair summary? Yes. Yes, Mr. Hyde. Yeah. Thank you. So. Is it, is and, it and just, I know we'll be submitting comments either to the chair or to town council attorney Heim um, when we get the draft letter and what should be included in there. But if we could somehow in the first paragraph or second, if, I don't think it's going to be an extremely long letter, um, highlight that um, I know we break out the 43 units and the 13 units, but if we can just highlight that this is a, a totally affordable um, in different variations um, proposal that the HCA is uh, putting together. Great. Mr. Thanks. Chair, may I say something? Yes, Mr. Hyde. I'm sorry, Ms. Mon, I didn't mean to cut you off. If there are any individual comments that the board members would like to submit to me 
just individually, not a, not, a, not among yourselves, that you'd like to have, especially to highlight certain things. Um, I'd be very uh, receptive to receiving that, though I've been listening and taking notes to the dialogue here tonight. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Heim. So with that, on a motion by Mr. DeCourcy and a second by Mr. Hurd, meaning that we ask for an extension, meaning that we do proceed forward with a letter uh, of approval that we will review on the 9th. You know, um, oh, well, you're Mr. Mr. Heim. <laughs> I was looking over there for you. That's, uh, so, Mr. Heim. Mr. Hurd. Yes. Mr. DeCourcy. Yes. Mrs. Mahan. Yes. Mr. Dickens. Yes. It's a 4 0 vote, Mr. Uh, Helmut being absent. Right. Well, thank you. Have a good night, folks. Thank Happy you. Holidays. Good night. Bye. -bye. So, moving on to the consent agenda, we have the minutes from our December 5th meeting and, and a request from Anatomy Girl and Tavern for a late night event on uh, the 31st of this month through the 1st, I mean, New Year's Eve and the New Year's. Uh, and that's by Monotony Grill and Tavern, 25 Mass Ave, William Hines. And, and lastly, a reappointment to the Public Memorials Committee of Dennis Corbett, term to expire on January 31st, 2024. You know, and I have a quick question on that. That 2024 just seems a little short. Two years. From it's about a year. It's about a year. It There's is. staggered terms. Oh, 130. Oh, okay. So he's filling the staggered term for okay. the year. Okay, gotcha. All right, thank you. Yeah. My math is bad. Uh -huh. All right. Well, no, just to see, we're still in 22. <laughs> I just want to <laughs> yeah. note that yes. there was an emergency addendum that's attached. Yes. And that's also part of the consent agenda. Yeah, thank you. I remember doing the presentation. Yeah. <laughs> so, so it's like, so, um, and so, uh, that is a request for a contractor drain to drain a drain layer license. You know, so, uh, Move approval. Second. Okay. So on a motion by Ms. Mahine, a second by Mr. Hurd. Uh, approval of the consent agenda. Mr. Hine. Mr. Hurd? Yes. Mr. Corsi? Yes. Mrs. Mahan? Yes. Mr. Biggins? Yes. Janet Milton? Thank you. And so now on to item number seven for approval of common victualler license on Maria's Pizzeria, 86 Mass Avenue, Haki Deng Zigli. Hello. Can you, can you talk? Because I'm not hearing you. You just have to unmute your mic. Yeah. Hello, do you hear me okay? I can hear you fine. Just, uh, so, uh, so yes, thank you for joining us. You know, so uh, you want to tell us a little bit about yourself and what you plan sure. to do? Sure. My name is Haki Dengizli, and uh, I own the company named Pizza Days. I have a seven store around Massachusetts and one in Miami. I'm taking over the Maria's Pizza in Grill 86 uh, Mass Ave, Arlington. So I'm here right now to get your uh, permission to take over the location. And I've been doing this business almost 20 years. I'm helping all the schools and um, all the kids love my pizzas. I wanna continue as is, I'm not gonna change anything. Um, other than that, any question I can answer? Okay. Great, thank you. I'll turn to my colleagues. Uh, move approval. Uh, I do see you list. You're going to run this with only two employees, but I have a feeling you're going to need a few more. But that's your business management plan. <clears throat> Correct. Um, it's not easy right now to find someone. That's true. So that's true. So even though it's Sunday week, they close. No. Uh, well, hopefully I do my best. Yeah. I need to train the people. So yeah. Okay. So move approval. Second. No comments for me. So look, thank you very much for me for um, for continuing the business here. I mean, and yes, it is a struggle, you know, but but um, I mean, there are a lot of hungry people out in the East. I mean, so I think you'll do well, and and we'll understand if we have to wait a little longer, I me mean, for our food. So so on a motion by Mrs. Mahan and a second by Mr. Um, Duhorsi, you know, 
Oh, uh, Mr. Hyde. Mr. Hurd? Yes. Mr. Corsi? Yes. Mr. Ma? Yes, thank you. Mr. Yes. Thank yeah, you very Mr. much. Ma. Take care. Thank you. So, on now to item number eight for approval of the license renewals. And uh, this is everything you know, for the for the whole town, you know, and, and um, I'll turn to my colleagues. Move approval. Motion by Mr. Hurd. Second. And second by Mr. Corsi. So any comments, questions? Uh, so, uh, so I saw in, in a couple of cases I mean, that, would, that there was a reference I mean, to comments, you know, and is that just boilerplate or were there comments to me that just weren't included in the back? So you should have been able, I don't know if it was possible, but to hover over it, the planning department had just made a couple notes. Basically it was, if a restaurant was on the list that had closed in the year, they okay. had noted that. Yeah. If it was changing location, they had noted that. Yeah. But other than that, there was no controversial, crazy comments that they had made. Okay, yeah, I did see a little yellow thing hovered Yeah, thing. a little like yeah, yeah, and yeah. I think maybe the way I downloaded it, I mean, uh, it didn't <coughs> work, because I kind of downloaded them all onto this machine, but I think you have to maybe have the link live, I mean, okay. and, and then you see that, so, okay, you know, so, alrighty, you know, well, beyond that, no other um, comments or questions for me, so on a motion by Mr. Hurd, and a second by Mr. Corsi, Mr. Heim? Mr. Hurd? Yes. Mr. Corsi? Yes. Mr. Mahan? Yes. Mr. Davis? Yes. Yeah, I spoke. Thank you. So, open forum. Except in unusual circumstances, any matter presented for, circ for consideration of the board shall neither be acted upon nor a decision made the night of the presentation in accordance with the policy under which the open forum was established. It should be noted that there is a three minute time limit to present a concern or a request. And I'm not seeing any hands up. And I'll just add, the only reason I added it, I know that we wanted to have a short meeting, was just in case there were comments based on uh, the kind of Sunnyside uh, property. You know. So, uh, all right, we'll move on to traffic rules in order. A quick follow-up by me on the town manager screening committee um, process. So uh, the, um, the superintendent has agreed to be a part of it. You know, and so, uh, Mr. Corsi and I will present a, a, a recommendation for someone from the town side, probably a department head I mean, on, on the ninth. And so uh, we'll await your um, appointees I mean, at that meeting. Yes, Ms. Mahan? Um, well, <clears throat> my appointee will be Kate Larry. Okay. Um, I've already spoken to her. She's accepted to do it. And um, when the probably after the holidays, holy days, um, either the chair or through the chair with the human resources director, if the other three or the other two appointees, if um, you or Ms. Malloy could just sort of send them a general uh, time frame of, because like Kate was asking me about what does it um, encompass Right. And I said, well, nothing can start until after January 13th, right. but even then, right. you know, it could be four to eight weeks out after that. Yes. And um, she also was asking about uh, in-person Zoom hybrid. Um, and I said, you know, I'd leave that up, up to the committee. Right. I said, probably hybrid, but I don't know. Yeah. So, and just asking about how many uh, meetings and... I said, you know, the, once the committee met, they would determine that, but I didn't see this as a labor-intensive right. um, exercise. So whenever those, the committee's known, if um, we could just send out to uh, at least the other three designees for myself, Mr. Helmuth and Mr. Hurd, sort of a framework. Yeah, no, no, no. Well, that's part of the reason for having this follow-up now, Ian. And so I, mean, I had a conversation with, um, um, Bernie, lunch meet, and and we're thinking the commitment will be I mean, nine to ten hours. I mean, I would say I mean, probably eight to twelve to be on on the safe side, and and I'll extend over three to four meetings. You know, and and right now the thinking is that the meetings will be virtual. You know, uh, we will do hybrid. I mean, if if 
necessary. And, um, and certainly committee, you know, if it decides that it wants to do in person or hybrid, it'll be up to the committee, but in terms of time commitment, you know, probably eight to 12 hours over three to four meetings, um, extending uh, from the end of January into most of February. So, so, so yeah. Thank uh, you. So, any other questions, concerns, or anything for anyone? All right. We're happy to do that. And, uh, and uh, finally, we have um, correspondence received. Uh, this concerns uh, on, regarding speeding on Highland Avenue uh, by Garrow Sarah Darian. You know, and I'll just give a little background. This is came in, in, in um, November, early November, and Officer Rateau responded with you know, a fairly extensive list of, of um, times that there had been observations. And, and I felt that he, I could take that in and form a response. I mean, and then I thought about it for a while, and, and um, I, I couldn't really. I mean, so so um, I'm going to send it on over uh, to TAC. And there was a little other hesitancy about sending it to TAC because cause I think we all got the letter. <laughs> and so we saw that at the bottom of it was a little colorful. you know. And, and so, so I was like, can I just kind of handle this? And, and also, Officer Rato and I had had a conversation about maybe there's some things that we can handle and, and not send me to TAC. If we, and, and, but I just don't see how I, I can because although we, Officer Toro had shown that they had looked, done some observations. I mean, there were some other issues uh, that were brought up in the letter. And I think we just need to send it to TAC, even if TAC you know, just does a short response. It will be a formal response I mean, to the resident, I mean, and we'll go from there. So, so, so my request, I mean, uh, well, I guess I shouldn't make the request. I, I just explained things, so now I'll let someone make the motion, you know, and we'll go from there. Move receipt, referral. Okay. Second. All right, so on uh, motion by Mr. Hurd and a second by Mr. Mahan, we need to receive and send attack. Mr. Heim. Mr. Hurd? Yes. Mr. Corsi? Yes. Mrs. Mahan? Yes, thank you. Mr. Dickens? Yes. Unanimous vote. Thank you. So uh, now new business. And, uh, uh, Ms. Meyer? Just happy holidays and happy new year. Thank you. Mr. Puller? I reiterate that sentiment. <laughs> happy holidays to everybody. Thank you. Mr. Hyde. Uh, just one quick note and I'll echo the sentiments. Uh, the Attorney General's Office has finished reviewing um, our bylaw uh, submissions from the 2022 annual town meeting. There was uh, a bylaw that they approved, which we've been waiting on for a while about um, solar panel requirements. That was a part of our zoning bylaw. There are two other bylaws uh, amendments that they um, have taken a somewhat unorthodox position on, or I shouldn't say unorthodox, but um, atypical positions on. One involving our domestic partnership bylaw update, um, which they did not reject, but they considered to be a personnel bylaw change. And then the second is uh, they're holding our rodenticide um, regulation bylaw pending some special legislation that we also submitted in town meeting that same annual town meeting. So this is something I'll bring back to the board just so the public can sort of understand what happened and uh, the board can consider, you know, um, these issues going forward in advance of our Warren article season. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Corsi? Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, a few items uh, that I have. Um, first of all, it, uh, back in 2020, on December 7th, 2020, the board issued a proclamation, or read a proclamation, um, stating that November 7th, 2020, the month before, was Diamond Chamalis Day in the town of Arlington. She was 106 at that time. She passed away last week on December 14th at the age of 108 at the, um, and at the time of just before her death, she was the oldest living resident in the town of Arlington. So I, I, it was an honor to have her there back at the end of 2020. Our condolences to her family, but I, a, a, a life uh, well lived um, uh, by her. Um, second item, and uh, those of you who followed the, the World Cup saw that Argentina uh, won on Sunday. Um, there is a little bit of an Arlington connection, and it's, it's a, very much of a stretch, but back in 2016, 
the Argentinian soccer team dined at Tango uh, after having a, a match at Gillette Stadium, and, and among the, the participants that evening was Lionel Messi, the, uh, the great star for Argentina, so it's a little bit of a connection there um, to Arlington. Third thing, uh, last week, the, uh, last Friday, the Long Range Planning Committee met. Um, we will be meeting again in January, but I talked to the chair, um, he, Mr. Poo, uh, the chair, Mr. Poole, and I will be talking in January, and I believe there will be a, a fuller presentation to the board as to our budget situation and, and um, potential decision points going forward. So I just want to update everybody on that. Lastly, happy holidays and happy new year. Thank you. Mr. Hurt? My seven-year-old will be happy to know that knowledge. The past two weeks, he keeps asking me, who's better, Ronaldo or Messi? <laughs> I say, I don't know. I won't follow soccer. <laughs> but um, no, no new business other than happy holidays to everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Um, no new business and um, to everyone celebrating holy days, holiday, holidays, um, happy, happy holidays to everyone, as well as um, my heartfelt thanks on um, my circumstances of late, and I appreciate uh, my colleagues and everyone else who's reached out and uh, hold all those you love dear and those who aren't so near that, that they still have a place in your heart. Thank you. You're welcome. And I guess that's one reason that I feel that whenever you have an opportunity to express your gratitude to someone, you know, take it because you just don't know uh, when that chance will um, go away. I mean, for whatever reason, you know. So, yes, happy holidays to everybody, you know. And Mr. DeCourcy had the only piece of new business I mean, that I was going to have regarding the LRP, you know. And so, so um, um, next year is going to be an interesting year, you know. Uh, they always are, you know. <laughs> so, so I'm looking forward to it. And, and I thank to everyone, you know, for all your support, you know, uh, in this position, you know. And yeah, so I'll just stop there and say, I'll take a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. Okay, so a motion to adjourn by Mr. Mahan and a second by Mr. DeCourcy. Mr. Heim. Mr. Hurd? Yes. Mr. DeCourcy? Yes. Mrs. Mahan? Yes, thank you. Mr. Dickens? Yes. Happy holidays. You're adjourned. All right. Bye. Bye.